I'm Enrique Cerna. Next on Conversations, singer and songwriter Peter Yarrow will talk about his fascinating music career, his days with the legendary trio Peter, Paul, and Mary, his writing and producing of hit songs and children's books, plus his social and political activism. Peter Yarrow, next on Conversations. Local production and broadcast of Conversations at KCTS 9 is made possible in part by KCTS 9 members and by a major grant from the Floyd and Dolores Jones Foundation and by viewers like you. Thank you. Peter Yarrow, welcome to Conversations. So good to have you here. Good to be here. Good to be here with you. Anytime I'm being broadcast on viewer sponsored TV, it's good to be part of the happiness and the intelligence of our nation as we explore ideas and things and stuff of our creation. Very nice. Puff, etc. There you go. Oh, the song that uh, I remember that as a young boy listening to that song and wondering. At first, you know, it seemed a little sad to me, but as a I little listened, sad. yeah, but a I was a little bit at the time trying to figure sad. it out. It's really sad. What? Tell me how you ended up writing that song. You co-wrote it actually. Do you have Puff the Magic Dragon? He's there? here in the in the kids book. But why is don't it? you tell me the stories? I love. Oh no, for he's that. not. I mean, oh yeah, no, no, yes, he's here. He's I will. Here, he's here. But these are all the kids books right at the end, written. and then we'll work backwards. Oh, okay. There Over it is. Here. Part of the children's books. Yeah. At the end, first of all, in this book. You see, uh, it says, a dragon lives forever, but not so little girls and boys. Painted wings and giant's rings make way for other toys. And this is the way I sing with my with granddaughter. granddaughter. It says, see, and then here's the sad cloud and the sad face right. in the tree. One gray night it happened. Jackie Paper came no more, and Puff, that mighty dragon, he ceased his fearless roar. His head was bent in sorrow. See, sad rock, sad tree. Green scales fell like rain. Puff no longer went to play along the cherry lane. Without his lifelong friend, Puff could not be brave. So Puff, that mighty dragon, sadly slipped into his cave. Oh, Puff, the magic dragon, what's going on here? The tree is happy, Puff is happy, and there's a little girl. She's not in the song. What's going on here? What's going on? Well, I turn the page. Adults don't get it, but adult kids know right away. <laughs> there's Jackie, all grown up, and that's uh. his daughter. And I'm... He's given Hanalee to his daughter as I have given my music to my daughter who sings with me on all these books. And essentially, working backwards from that, what really happened was that it was a left open. But what really was intended to happen, and you should know, there's never any connection with drugs that was a foolish, unfortunate rumor. Yeah. It was unfortunate that there was a, a, a bomber with a Gatling gun named Puff the Magic Dragon. But you can't control these songs. But in the end, Puff's okay, Jackie's okay, and children have to grow up. And guess what happens when they do? They try and make the world a better place because they have to leave childish things. So what it's all about is really that, yeah, we need that dragon in our lives but when we grow older it's not a dragon it's our our tilting at windmills our hopes our dreams and puff is really a lot the ethos of hope and conviction even though it's not a political song you feel the yearning in it for resolution of 
of sadness. And all these years later, it has remained really a popular song. Now, you know, you, you, you've taken Puff and, and many other things, and you've created these children's books that are really song books. You, as you mentioned, you share it with your granddaughter, who's three, Valentina. That's right. I'd say yeah. before. And, and you know, the, but it, it's the songs and telling a story. Yes. And um, so it continues today, everything that you've done through your career. It does. And uh, what I have a great time going to bookstores. It's a new venue for me, you know. And, uh, you know, 47 years of performing with Paul and Mary. Mm -hmm. uh, I never played in a bookstore. Uh, to my recollection, but now it's it's wonderful. It's like um, thinking globally but acting locally, and you create a community. And when kids sing together and they sing, this little light of mine, I'm not gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it. I'm gonna let, let it shine. shine. There you go. <laughs> this little light of mine, I'm gonna let it. I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. When you do that, and the kids are all singing, they're far less likely to say, "Oh, you can't play with us." You know, you're the wrong religion. You eat funny food. The color of your skin is not appropriate. I will not play with you. And my mother said, so singing together, just as it bonded Peter, Paul, and Mary together when we sang, the answer, my friend, is blowing in the wind. The answer is blowing in the wind. When we sang that in 63 at the March in Washington, where Martin Luther King was delivering his I Have a Dream speech, that quarter of a million people was so powerfully bonded that we never stopped. We never looked back. We always said, I'd like, thank you, to be able to say the Pledge of Allegiance with liberty and justice for all without being a hypocrite. Because at that time, at that very time, you couldn't go into Washington if you were a person of color and use a, a water fountain. It's a, for colored only, or you had to be Marian Anderson couldn't sing in Constitution Hall. And if you were a class visiting Washington, you couldn't get a hotel that would take kids who were from different races. This is not very long ago. And as we become, we who have been critical of the United States in the past, we look at the genius of our country to go from that in 63 to a president who is African American, you got to say, we may not succeed in many arenas. We may make mistakes. But we're, this is a genius nation. As part of Peter, Paul, and Mary, uh, in fact, next year would mark that 50th anniversary of, right. of all of you mm -hmm. guys together. You're missing Mary Travers this day. We'll talk a little bit more about her in a, in a minute here. But mm -hmm. as that trio, you guys, um, you sang and were a part of major historical events. Obviously, this one yes. was, was really important. And, and oh, you've yeah. never been shy about your political activism and so no. social activism. No. But I'm wondering, at, at any time during the, the whole process of being involved politically, you were at Selma, you know, the March on Washington, sure. whether you feared for your life because mm. of what you were saying was not accepted by everyone. But in, on many occasions, our lives have been threatened. Now, I am, I would say, the least brave person if I see violence around me. I, I get really ill. But when it's a threat to something to which I am committed, something happens. We were threatened if we went to the March on Frankfurt, which was another uh, civil rights march, that uh, we'd be killed. And uh, a bomb went off when we were performing. It was a, turned out to be a stink bomb and a noise bomb. But Mary was pregnant. We just went. I was threatened when I went. There was something when there was the first series of discussions about land for peace, which, of course, is being now negotiated many, many years later. This was 30 years ago uh, in the 80s. And... There were calls to my home saying, 
to my children who picked up the phone, if your father goes to this march called the Passover Peace Celebration in New York, we're going to cut off his head. And they, these were the Kahane folks, mm -hmm. the people who were rabid about uh, Israel's right. not making such a deal. And many, many occasions, this kind of thing has happened. But you know what? I got the family together and I said to my kids, if you don't want your daddy to go, I won't go, but these people are cowards. It is true that some people have been killed, but this is most probably not, I mean, this was not Mississippi with Goodman, Cheney, and Schroeder, you know. Mm -hmm. And indeed, David Dinkins was the Manhattan Borough President, and I was surrounded by people, and nothing happened. But years later, my daughter, who had been at a march in Washington uh, that we were a part of, where Bishop Tutu, who had just gotten the Nobel Peace Prize, attended, the next day we were scheduled to get arrested together in front of the South African Embassy. And I had written a song, I'll sing a bit of it for you, it says. It connects Martin Luther King to uh, Nelson Mandela. And he heard this in jail, he said, in Robben Island, when I finally met him, he says, Brother Martin was walking with me And every step I heard of liberty Though he's fallen come a million behind Glory, hallelujah, we're gonna make it this time No easy walk to freedom No easy walk to freedom Just keep on walking and you shall be free That's how we're gonna make a history And you know what my daughter said? I don't know what you would say if you if your daughter were to say to you, she would say, uh, Dad, I want to get arrested with you. <laughs> and I said, sweetheart, I, so, I swear, this one was, you can't miss two days of school. That's what this daddy said. So, and she said, Dad, Daddy, I need to do this for me. Well, she did get arrested. She was only like 14 years uh -huh. old and she had green hair. And years later, she said, Dad, I want to go and make a film in the townships on... Uh, in South Africa? In South Africa. Yeah. She was at Yale at the time. She got a fellowship. Now, I knew it was the, the most dangerous place with the greatest frequency of, of rape in the world. But here she was asking me to do something, and she had given me permission to go when my life was... Ended. Well, she did go there. She did make a film that was shown on PBS, mm -hmm. Women's Voices. It's called Mama Away to Power to the Women. It shows, tells the story of how they created, you know, um, a, a, a grassroots possibility of what uh, uh, South Africa became once Nelson Mandela uh, was released from jail after 27 years. Well, the point was Either you, 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 you do that or, or you don't. And when it comes to those kinds of actions, no, uh, I, 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 don't, I don't get scared. I just go do it, you know? Let's talk about, as you mentioned in, in the beginning as we started talking, um, you know, sharing uh, the songs that you've written in book form, song yeah. form with young people, but also... Um, you have an effort called Operation Rescue, or Operation Re Re Respect. Respect, I'm yes. sorry, Operation Respect. But many people make that mistake. Yeah, uh, you're, you're, just a slip of the tongue, just a slip of the tongue. Yes. Uh, Operation Respect, and, but play for me the song. Ah, yes. This is the one that's been translated into Hebrew, Arabic, and is in Israel now. Shortly I'm going to Ukraine, it's going to be sung in Ukrainian. It's also been translated into Croatian and Mandarin. I'm a little boy with glasses, the one they call a geek. A little girl who never smiles, cause I got braces on my teeth. And I know how it feels to cry myself to sleep. 
Yes, I'm the kid on every playground. I'm the one that's chosen last. A single teenage mother trying to overcome my past. You don't have to be my friend, but is it too much to ask? Don't laugh at me. Don't call me names. Don't get your pleasure. From my pain, in God's eyes, we're all the same. Someday we'll all have perfect wings. Don't laugh at me. I'm fat, I'm thin, I'm short, I'm tall, I'm deaf, I'm blind. Hey. Aren't we all? I'm black, I'm white, and I am brown. I'm Jewish, I'm Christian, I'm Muslim, I'm Buddhist. I'm wealthy, I'm very, very poor. Such an important song, and the effort that you're making now with this Operation Respect, because. Um, sadly, these days, uh, gay and lesbian teens have been targeted, bullying, not, and not just them. Uh, uh, there's it's efforts. one tip of the iceberg. Right. But how do we get people to realize that that is unnecessary? Well, we don't get them through logic. They don't realize anything. Uh, we can't change the mindset of an adult if they're sure that Jews, like me, are avaricious that uh, Hispanics are, are, are lazy and blacks are, are, are stupid, they're going to go to their grave with that preconception in the same sense that you're not going to turn me into a bigot at this age. So how do we change it? Not with logic, by the same mechanism that the civil rights movement was, was successful and, and other movements, through inspiration and love. If we come from that place, and we reach out with our hearts, and we are basically uh, nonviolent. I mean, we are pacifistic. We are uh, we 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 are pacif pacifists in the sense that we do not engage in uh, exchanges of of anger and violence, and we we treat each other with respect. If we can educate the kids using the music frequently, but with so that their social and emotional and creative growth is valued as much as their academic growth, which is not the way it's been under No Child Left Behind, as well intentioned as it was. Mm -hmm. It's all about kids doing well on high stakes tests and evaluating schools in terms of their success simply by virtue of the. Yes, We've got to teach them academics, but that's one component. It's really, really essential. And that's why my work and the work of Operation Respect is working together with 42 organizations called United Voices for Education that have gone to Secretary Duncan, the Education Secretary, and are lobbying for this other component, the heart component. If we can, for instance, in Israel, I was just writing about this, if we can get those kids, that uh, kids in that are Arabic and Palestinian background, and and uh, Jewish, and they're most of the schools are separate, to to early on accept each other, they can put aside this imperative of animosity, anger, fear, and hatred that those adults are going to carry to the grave. But they must lead. And if we don't honor the children and learn from them and let them lead us, it's not going to happen. Mm -hmm. we, the, the, the leaders, look, look what's happened. We've got now three months, you know, in essence, to, to move forward with this peace process there. The leaders, it's very clear everybody in Israel pretty much knows whether they like it or not. It's going to be a two-state solution. Mm -hmm. But unless it's in the heart, it won't stick. And to make it happen in the heart, 
we need the kids to say. I'm the beggar on the corner, and they sing it. You've passed me on the street. I wouldn't be out here begging if I had enough to eat. And don't think I don't notice that our eyes never meet. And I say to the kids, how does it feel when somebody, you know, you're talking to them and they just turn away? I say, you're not worth talking to. It hurts. We have to sensitize kids. And we have to let them know that they're not to do what adults are doing. In this world, the problem is not a kid's problem. It is a societal problem. Let's talk about Mary Travers. Yes. She um, obviously was such a significant voice of Peter, Paul, and Mary. She passed away. It's been about a little over a year now. Yes. Um, what did she mean to you and, and the work that all that you, the three of you did. Uh, Bill Paul Stuckey was also a part of the group, and, and um, you guys did some, so much together, so many great songs. You miss her. You know, uh, you don't really know somebody in certain ways when you're just living together and loving together and adventuring together. And now that she's gone, I see with the distance a greater clarity about who Mary has been in my life and to the world. Um, for one thing, she was a woman who was not, as Gloria Steinem said at her uh, memorial celebration, we had extraordinary people there, everybody, you know, from uh, Pete Seeger to uh, one of the, uh, Rutha Harris, one of the freedom singers, to. Dolores Huerta from the United Farm Workers to John Kerry who said, if Mary were here, she'd say, this looks like a reunion of the Nixon's enemies list. <laughs> <laughs> well, everybody spoke out. And it was more than just remembering Mary, Mary. We were recommitting to something that we were all involved in together. And she did not, according to Gloria Steinem, she did not compromise. She wasn't saying, oh, well, I have to be devious to get what I want in the world. She was straightforward, she was honest, you always knew where she was coming from. She was relentlessly uh, honest, and her commitment when she sang was so pure that, uh, as David Halberston said, uh, he passed away before she did, uh, when he heard her sing, he had to stop the car, uh, because he said that voice was that longing for, not only for in 500 miles for somebody who'd literally and figuratively lost his shirt, but was a longing for decency, a better world. And she never stopped. The drama of her, as Albert Grossman, our manager, who really suggested to me that we make a group, right. said the first time you see Peter Paul and Mary, you don't hear a note, and you see nothing except Mary. You just see that creature. And that's all you can do. The next time you listen to the music, <laughs> not that it was exclusive, but she was so incredibly powerful. Now, that doesn't, her passing does not mean the music is gone. It means there is even greater imperative on her behalf and everybody else's behalf to have it carry on. And so it is that that is our task. You at Public Broadcasting yeah. and we as performers who believe that this music humanizes and sensitizes people in a critical way. I have to close out here, but it, could you uh, close me out with a song that uh, you and uh, No Paul Stuckey and Mary Travers used to sing together? I shall, of course. And I will do this knowing that this is a song that is on your public broadcasting network in a new program called The Sing Along, Sing -along. Peter Yard, Peter... And then what you'll see, the next generation, with Keb Mo and Mary Chapin Carpenter. And your daughter, part of that. And my too. daughter. Yeah. And this will be on it. And this is a song you will hear us all sing together. And you'll say, you know what? They're alive and well. And they will keep on keeping on. We go like this. How many roads must a man walk down? Before they call him a man How 
many seas must a white dove sail before she sleeps in the sand. How many times must the cannon balls fly before they're forever banned? The answer, my friend, is blowing in the wind. The answer is blowing in the wind. The answer, my friend, it's all around us, it's within us. The answer is blowing. Thank you so much. Thank you, my brother. All right. This little light of mine, I'm not going to let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it, I'm going to let, let it shine. shine. There you go. <laughs> this little light of mine, I'm going to let it, I'm going to let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. Local production and broadcast of Conversations at KCTS 9 is made possible in part by KCTS 9 members and by a major grant from the Floyd and Dolores Jones Foundation and by viewers like you. Thank you.